Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and welcome to my channel, The Pink Dumbbell Problem. Today we have a new video in the In the Discourse series. It's a chilly night in Halifax. I'm sitting here cozied up with my arm warmers on. As I've mentioned a few other times on this channel, particularly in my Agnotology and Music video, I'm a huge fan of the work of the late Sir Terry Pratchett. It was announced on Wednesday that Pratchett's estate has authorized the use of the Sam Vimes Boots Theory of Economic Unfairness for an actual real life application. It comes from one of the earlier novels in uh, Sir Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, Men at Arms. The idea that he wants to get at here is that it's more expensive to be poor than it is to be rich. This tends to make the rounds on social media at least a couple of times per year. So a lot of you will probably have seen it on, especially on Twitter or Facebook. But for those who haven't, I'm going to actually read the clip from the book for you. The reason that the rich were so rich, Vimes reasoned, was because they managed to spend less money. Take Boots, for example. He earned $38 a month plus allowances. A really good pair of leather boots cost $50. But an affordable pair of boots, which were sort of okay for a season or two and then leaked like hell when the cardboard gave out, cost about $10. Those were the kind of boots Vimes always bought and wore until the soles were so thin that he could tell where he was in Inkmore Pork on a foggy night by the feel of the cobbles. But the thing was that good boots lasted for years and years. A man who could afford $50 had a pair of boots that'd still be keeping his feet dry in 10 years' time. While a poor man who could only afford cheap boots would have spent $100 on boots in the same time and would still have wet feet. This was the Captain Samuel Vimes Boots Theory of Socioeconomic Unfairness. Why is this in the news? What's, what's this got to do with the discourse? This is what happened Wednesday morning. News outlets were reporting that the Pratchett estate has given approval for the use of the name Vimes and the Boots Index in a real life thing. Poverty activist and, and rights campaigner Jack Monroe is actually creating an index that shows how this concept works. It's day-to-day -day goods and services like boots. So for somebody who's making a six-figure salary, the price of a loaf of bread going up by 25 cents is no big deal because it's not really affecting their bottom line all that much. They can still well afford it. But for somebody who's on minimum wage, that's a lot. In fact, some people aren't even on minimum wage. They're on even less than that. They are underemployed or they are on disability benefits and they don't get anywhere near the minimum wage. And of course, the people higher up in the tax bracket are the ones making the economic decisions. So when people are out there in the discourse not understanding that this is how price changes and stagnating wages, stagnating minimum wages affect people. People share that meme about the boots theory to illustrate the point. That's one of the great things about Sir Terry Pratchett's work was that he did a lot of that sort of thing. He could take a concept that we all kind of knew, but maybe didn't really have the language for, didn't really didn't really know how to articulate it and put it in the mouth of one of our favorite characters and make it into a more real life concept, even though these are fantasy novels and they're not even set on our earth at all. Um, he made them more real and more human uh, concepts for us. So he did a lot of that. And the Boots theories, I think, is probably his most famous. If you're into stories where injustices are challenged and assumptions and stereotypes are challenged, this is a pretty good series to get into. That's the whole news about Boots Theory. The other thing is a quick update. A few weeks ago, I did a video on uh, fitness equipment from the dollar store, the Canadian chain Dollarama. And one of the things I showed you was these discs. And I forget now how much I paid for them, but nothing in Dollarama is more than $4. So I definitely didn't pay more than $4. And I just wanted to point out um, the absolute economic silliness that happens in anything that can be commodified and charged a fee for. I was in another store, not a fitness uh, or health store, goods store. Um, it was a, it was a bookstore, book, a national chain of bookstores. And they often carry odds and ends and bits of other things. And they had a whole display of yoga stuff. Even though these aren't really a yoga tool, they had sets of these and they were in little square mesh zippered up bags and they were charging $28. <laughs> now, like I said, I don't remember exactly what I paid for these, but it was no more than $4. So they were literally charging seven times more. I snuck a peek in one of the bags. They were exactly the same thing as these, except for the color. Now, granted, they were very pretty colors, but they're not seven times prettier than this. I actually really like this. This shade of blue is one of my absolute favorite colors. So not only is the product not worth seven times the price of these, but it's a really good example of how high-end gift stores and things like that can 
make yoga in particular, but fitness in general, um, seem like it's something outside the price range or the economic range or the class range of a lot of people. You don't need fancy equipment for any of these things. You can go again, dive, buy these at the Dollar M if you really want to use them. You can do this with some paper plates. Just go get the old Royal Chinette out of the barbecue uh, stash and <laughs> run those along the floor. It'll basically do the same thing. They'll wear out faster, but it'll do the same thing. There's companies out there that are putting these in little bags and charging you seven times the price for them. And that's absolutely ridiculous. You don't need to pay more because you're not getting anything more. It, these are these are meant to be functional. If they're going to sit on a shelf and you're going to take pretty pictures of, of them to put up on Instagram because you're a fitness influencer, maybe they're worth your money. But so there you go, folks. Really quick video today because I got to run out and teach a class in a minute. Get some Terry Pratchett. Don't pay more for fitness tools. Go buy the cheap ones. And as always, let me know what you think about these things in the comments. All right. Are you a Sir Terry Project fan? Have you ever read his stuff? And if you are a fan, what are some of your favorite concepts from his books or maybe some of your favorite quotes? If this is something people like, I can totally do more of that. I can talk about his novels all day. What about fitness things? Have you seen any ridiculously priced fitness things that you're literally paying for the name or the pretty color or some silly packaging? So as always, thanks for watching everybody. And I will be back next week with part three in the fitness video red flags series, the third and final part of that series. Make sure you hit subscribe and like and click the notification bell and do all that fun stuff down below. Share this with friends. And you can see my links down below for things like Patreon, where you can get some extra videos that only Patreon members get. And my Threadless store, where you can buy some merch with some of my favorite slogans on it. And as always, lift heavy, fight the patriarchy, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.